Pops Edmonds just shocked the auto industry. More than 20% of people who are upside down on their car loan are upside down by more than 10 thousand dollars that means when they go to trade in their vehicle to buy a new one they owe ten thousand dollars more than what their vehicle is currently worth pretty shocking um well for one fifth of all those people who have uh, negative equity to have it exceed ten thousand uh, dollars yeah that that's uh, th- it, it doesn't necessarily surprise me, but I, I guarantee it pretty much leads to cardiac arrest when they break it to the customer how much negative equity they have. I mean, Dad, 7.5% of folks that have upside down equity, negative equity, oh, by more than 15000 Dollars. We've been documenting this for a long time here on the Car Edge channel. There's a major financial issue at play. A lot of people got approved for very long loan terms with inflated vehicle values back in 2021, 2022, and 2023. And now this latest Edmonds data is showing us the repercussions of that. People who want to trade out of those vehicles get into new vehicles and didn't realize that when you take out a 96 month <laughs> long loan term, you don't pay down a lot of principal. At the same time, Dad, used car values have been depreciating like normal, except for EVs. They've actually been depreciating appreciating more than normal. That's a recipe for disaster now. And a lot of people who might want to buy a new vehicle or a used car, they won't be able to because, well, when you bring $10,000 or $15,000 or any amount of negative equity to the table, that means you have to have more cash down or better credit to get approved for a higher loan to value ratio, or someone's got to make up the money somewhere, right? Uh, absolutely. I, I know I used to train my salespeople to remind customers who had a trade-in to simply say to them, you know, most of our customers have uh, have uh, negative equity in their trade. In other words, they owe more on their car that's what it, than what it's worth. So just between us, uh, how were you planning on handling your negative equity? Uh, most people were shocked to hear that. Um, well, how much negative equity? Well, you know, on average, it runs about five thousand dollars. Is what we hate seen. to break. Hate to break it to you, Dad. We can we can update your talk track right now. On average, it's six thousand four hundred and fifty eight dollars, Dad. Oh, okay, so let's train the salespeople. So on average, we've seen that it's about sixty five hundred dollars worth of negative equity. How how are you how are you planning on handling that? And and besides the glazed look on people's eyes, they're going to, well, will 500 hours help? Um, yeah, it'll get your negative equity down to $6,000. What it requires when people have that type of negative equity, the, ca- the, the, the bank is looking for uh, some type of participation from the customer in order to be able to approve them on their next car loan. So they want to see the customer put up, if they're $6,500 negative, probably somewhere between $3,500 and $4,000 at minimum cash down before they'd even consider them for a loan. Now, most of those people typically don't have $3,500 to $4,000. So those people who had hoped to get back in the market sooner rather than later are going to find themselves doing it later rather than sooner. Zach, is it true? I've heard a rumor that you could save $250 on a CarEdge extended warranty for your new car. Go to CarEdge.com slash warranty. Between now and November 4th, we're offering a $250 promotion. Take advantage of that today. So it is true. And Dad, we know we ran a negative equity research report with our friends over at BlackBook. Nearly one third of drivers out there are in a negative equity position. And for EV owners, it's almost half, 46% of EV owners are in a negative equity position. And we know that BMW and Tesla owners, and then Ram is out that, on that list too, are the most likely to be in a negative equity position. So we went from a period of time, Pops, where it was very easy to get approved for an auto loan. It was very easy to extend terms. Loan to value ratios, we've done tons of videos on loan to value ratios. Pops will give a quick overview here in a second. Loan to value ratios were out of whack. Yes. And it was the boom times, right? Things were great. Now we're entering a period where all the headlines we get from all the various banks are that the consumer credit profile is weakening. Auto loan delinquency rates are the highest they've been since the Great Recession, even dating back to before the Great Recession. And we know that auto loan repo rates are also through the roof. We can see that in the data for the vehicles that are making it to the auction check-ins, the dealer auctions. More and more of them are repossessed vehicles, consumer repossessions, and even dealer repossessions. We've gone from boom times to bust times in like 18 months, Dad, because the negative equity situation are taking all these people who would be buyers out of the market. And I think the call to action here to our community 
is get a, get a gut check on what your vehicle's actually worth. Go to CarEdge.com, pretend to sell it. Pretend to sell your car and just get a sense for what Carvana would pay for it or what you, the dealer down the street would pay for it because it's probably gonna be lower than you think and you're probably gonna owe more than what you think. The, uh, the sad reality is that when there were automobile shortages and dealers were charging market adjustments because of those shortages, that the banks went along with it. Banks would finance 100% of, of MSRP, 110%. If you were really, really good credit-wise, they might do 120% of MSRP. So, so let's say the MSRP was $10,000. They would finance $12,000, 120%, $12,000. During the height of the shortages, the banks were financing, agreeing to financing upwards of, of 150 to 160% of MSRP. So that same car that had an MSRP of, of $10,000, suddenly, be, just because there was a shortage, uh, the banks were willing to finance upwards of fifteen dollars to $16,000 on that car. Well, guess what? That car that had an MSRP of $10,000, once it was sold, it was worth eight thousand. So instead of somebody being upside down four grand, if if they had really good credit, they're now upside down seven to eight grand if they had really good credit because the banks were complicit in making this happen. Those people, unless they're bringing a lot of cash to the table, those people are stuck in those cars for quite some time. This comes at the same time that we see automakers struggling. Stellantis recently had their earnings 20% decline in profits. Nissan, 99% decline in profits. And you can't be hard pressed to think that this is in part because would-be customers are on the sidelines after they went to their local dealer and realized they were five, 10, 15, $20,000 upside down on that Ford Mustang Mach-E that they bought two years ago over sticker price. That's an unfortunate reality for this industry. Like you've taken millions, tens of millions of customers out of the market, all the people, not, uh, it, it pains me to say all, but probably all the people in 2022 and a lot of the people in 2023, except for those who listened to Car Edge and got a great deal. Those people are probably out of the market unless they can bring thousands on average $6,500 to the table. One more thing we have to touch on, dad, gap insurance, guaranteed yes. asset protection insurance. We have dedicated videos on this, Google search gap insurance, Car Edge, and we've got guides on it. But if you do not have gap insurance on your vehicle and you are upside down on your uh, auto loan, which again, call to action here, go pretend to sell your car to a dealer on caredge.com and just see how upside down you are. You need to be prepared. You need to be uh, aware of the fact that gap insurance could help you out in that situation. Oh, absolutely. And, and anybody today who's buying a new car or a used car and they're not putting 20 to 25% cash down when they buy it, absolutely you should get gap insurance on that loan. And just to piggyback on one thing you said, those millions of people that have all that negative equity that that are in the market to get a car and then find out that they can't get a car because they have all that negative equity, that just makes it harder and harder for dealers to move the existing inventory that they have because their normal customer who wanted to come back and buy a car can't because they have so much negative equity. We'll link to the Edmonds research down below as well as the Car Edge and Black Book report there as well. Pops, thanks for your time as always. My pleasure, Handsome. Thank you.